Thank you for tuning into this video on selective incorporation. Now, selective incorporation is a, typically a tough topic, and it deals with liberties, which of course are your protections from the government. And in this case, most of the liberties are in our Bill of Rights, our first ten amendments. And now, the real question with the Bill of Rights is: Do they protect you from your state governments, the central government, or both? And this question was asked in the the early 1800s, wondering if you know, looking at the actual wording of the Bill of Rights, it seems like it only applies to the central government. And in fact, the founders really only wanted it to apply to the central government. They were afraid of a strong central government uh, basically persecuting the people. So they still had that harboring feeling that the central government um, needed to be restricted. So it did not, you know, take away the rights of the people. They felt like the states would, would best represent the people and never trample on people's rights and never kind of interfere with those inherent liberties that the people deserve to have. So they felt like the states were, were not really a concern. So when the courts looked at this, they saw B, that the Bill of Rights only protects you from the central government. And in fact, we see that in Baron v. Baltimore. In Baron v. Baltimore, we have a uh, rich wharf owner and his wharf is destroyed by the city, Baltimore. And Baron wants the city to pay for his wharf, to repair it, or to just pay for the entire wharf. His property was taken away. And in the Fifth Amendment, there is an imminent domain clause, which basically says that the government can take your property as long as they compensate you. So they must have a just compensation, a fair compensation. But when the court looks at this, they decide that, you know, the, the Fifth Amendment only applies to the federal government. So the states and cities, they can take your land or destroy your land without ever paying you or not paying you a fair wage. So despite Barron feeling like, you know, you destroyed my land, you should pay for it, the Supreme Court says the Ten Amendments, the, the Bill of Rights, don't apply to states. So Barron loses. So if we ask the question, does the Bill of Rights protect us from our state governments? No, it doesn't. Uh, the Bill of Rights really doesn't protect you from the state taking away any of your rights. That is until the 14th Amendment comes along. The 14th Amendment comes along uh, following the Civil War, and it includes the Due Process Clause and the Equal Protection Clause, which are really trying to fix some of the causes of the uh, Civil War. And due process says, no sh nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without the due process of law. So it's basically saying you have to have some sort of legal proceeding uh, before your life, your liberties, or your property are taken away. And it also says, nor shall any state deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. Both very, very important, and both lead to a lot of freedoms applying to the states. Let me tell you how. So you take this due process clause and you mix it with any clause of the Bill of Rights, and the Supreme Court has made some of the Bill of Rights apply to the states. This is called selective incorporation. Uh, we see it first appear in Gitlow v. New York. Gitlow is um, having an issue about freedom of speech, and so he is suing the state of New York. And the, the state government basically, if we look just at the Bill of Rights, then Gitlow would probably lose. They would say that, you know, states can restrict your freedom of speech. But because of the due process clause, the Supreme Court says we can selectively incorporate clauses of the Bill of Rights using the due process to make them apply to the states. So case by case, the Supreme Court has made a good chunk of the Bill of Rights apply to the states as well. So here's a, a nice visual example. So we have the Due Process Clause from the 14th Amendment, and we have a clause from the Bill of Rights, like freedom of speech. If you click them together, then they apply to the states. But this can only be done through a court case. So whenever SCOTUS feels like Due Process Clause pertains to the Bill of Rights, uh, they may have a case that shows that. Great example is Gideon v. Wainwright. Gideon is a um, kind of a, a career criminal, uh, but he has a 
basically he's, he's in for another crime that he believes he didn't commit. And he's poor. He, he doesn't have an attorney. He can't afford an attorney. And the state of Florida doesn't have to provide him one because they say that the Sixth Amendment doesn't apply to them. So the rule in Florida is if you're competent, uh, you don't get an attorney. So Gideon has to defend himself. And if you're a lawyer looking at this case, you see this case as a case that Gideon or anyone could potentially win. If you're a lawyer uh, for Gideon, you would destroy this case. You'd be winning it for Gideon very easily. But Gideon doesn't know the legal jargon. He doesn't know how law works. So he ends up losing. Uh, there isn't a lot of evidence or witnesses, but he still loses because he doesn't have that legal background, the legal knowledge to defend himself. So he sues and he says, you know, I should, have, I should be protected by the Sixth Amendment. And the state says, no, you shouldn't. So he takes it up to the Supreme Court and he asks the Supreme Court to use the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment to get him a new trial by making the right to an attorney incorporate it. So he says, take due process clause, take the right to an attorney in the Sixth Amendment, and give me a new trial. And he wins. He gets a new trial. And he wins. So they basically make all the states not deprive him of his freedom without the right to an attorney. So we're essentially taking part of the Sixth Amendment, soaking it up in the due process sponge, the 14th Amendment sponge, and pouring it out on all the states. So the states have to uh, provide an attorney if you cannot afford one. So piece by piece, selectively, all of the Sixth Amendment has been incorporated into applying to the states. Piece by piece, through all these different court cases on the screen, we've seen each part of the Sixth Amendment become incorporated to apply to the states. So does the Bill of Rights protect you from your state government? Not according to Baron v. Baltimore, but the Due Process Clause allows certain court cases to make amendments apply to you in your state. Another way of looking at it is the Baron v. Baltimore case basically sets up a wall preventing you from being protected in your state by those Bill of Rights. And then case by case... We've taken away brick by brick so we can be protected by components of the Bill of Rights. Anyway, that's uh, pretty much an overview of selective incorporation. Piece by piece, those clauses in the amendments have been applied to the states as well uh, to make sure that we're protected from our state government too. Now, not everything in the amendments has been incorporated. So that's important to remember. Um, they didn't just make everything incorporated at one time. They decided to do it piece by piece because they felt every single clause was very, very different. Anyway, thank you for tuning in on this video, and I hope it provided a, a much-needed understanding.